Heather, the Malachite Lady. Um, tonight is another garden tour. It's a few days earlier than normal, but I'm trying to get myself onto a schedule. So here I am. Um, tonight's tour is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to show you my front flower beds in addition to the veggie garden because as I have said many times so far that I'm really trying to be authentic with this channel. And so I am showing you the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so you'll get to see some of the ugly tonight. Uh, while I have some very beautiful things growing in my flower beds, the beds themselves are a hot mess. So I just wanted to kind of show you a little bit about those and kind of explain my plan for my front flower beds. And uh, I welcome any input that you guys might have. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. Um, I do a little bit of everything here, mostly gardening, wellness, and art and DIY. So I hope you find something that you will enjoy on the channel. Um, I invite you to like the video, subscribe, and you know just continue on with the journey. For those of you who have been following along, welcome back. And I hope that the garden tour uh, brings you something that you enjoy. So come along with me. Okay, so we're going to start in the front flower beds today. And the specimen you see right in front of me that really, really needs a haircut is a burning bush. Um, they are known to be kind of invasive, but they were here when we bought the house. Um, so they'll probably stick around for a little while. I don't know if they'll get a really severe haircut this fall um, after they're done with their vibrant red color hence the name burning bush or if we'll replace them with something else I'm not really sure but I've got that one and I've got that one so they're both really good size I'm not sure how long they have been here because like I said the previous owners I inherited a whole lot of plants from them which is really good but there's a lot I don't know I haven't identified them yet I don't know how to take care of them yet so I'm still kind of learning. I've got some pretty yellow irises. They're not really very pretty right now because the sun has baked them a little bit. Um, but as you can see, this, these flower beds are really weedy. I need to get out here and divide those daylilies you see back there um, and put some different places see if I have some friends that want to take some of them off my hands. They're really pretty bright orange when they're finally blooming and I'll show you those when they're actually up and blooming. And that is a, I think it's a Rose Creek Abelia. I think that's what the tag says. Again, a lot of this is based on the tags that they left on the plants and some of the uh, identifying I have been able to do with an app called Picture This. Um, so I'm still not sure exactly what all I have. Um, to the left of the abelia and to the right over there by the gnome eating Godzilla, which is my husband's, that was my husband's housewarming gift when we first bought the house because he really likes Godzilla, are some columbines that my mother-in-law gifted me. Hopefully they will take off and get established and everything and we shall see and I will hopefully cut out all of the noise of the motorcycles that just revved past. Right there is an Asiatic lily. It's super pretty when it's in full bloom. So a lot of the flowers have either come and gone. I've got some tulips. I've got some other flowers that have come and gone but um, some of them are just now starting out. So there's one of my beautiful hostas. And right here in front is a Coreopsis that's taking off. And then we've got another Asiatic lily right there. And again, this is super weedy. Um, I need to get out here and weed and mulch and all of that. So. And another hosta, another coreopsis there. And this is a forsythia. There's one on either side of the 
um, steps here. Both of them really need a haircut. As you can see, we've got a little tree growing up there. I don't know what it is. It's sort of volunteered there. There's some things that need to desperately come out of these beds because at, like this black locust here, it's probably 10 feet tall. Um, I don't know if they actually planted it there, if a bird decided to, that I needed one. Um, picture this as this is a nine bark here. Again, I, I don't identify things very well yet. Kind of back there in the back, I don't know if you can see right here is a hydrangea. Um, it's got pretty white blossoms on it. And then I've got a purple iris here, bearded iris, that is just gorgeous. And since it's a little more shady over here, it's not quite as scalded. So that's good. And I've got more hostas back there. You can see them. And then this monster here, try to step back without falling down the hill, is a viburnum that is in desperate need of a haircut. And more grassy, sort of ornamental grasses. And this, if anyone knows what this is, hit me up in the comments because I have no idea. And I haven't tried to identify it with the picture of this yet. But if anyone knows what it is, hit me up. And down this side of the house, I have knockout roses. Absolutely love them. I wish I had smell-o-vision so you all could smell them because they smell delicious. Got buds all over this, y'all. All over it. You see them. And then I have a volunteer tulip poplar that needs to come out. That's on my to-do list. And then this knockout. Kind of the pinky red, which I love. And I have another yellow one. And it looks like I may have some honeysuckle taken over here that I need to pull out of it. But aren't these beautiful? And then my present to myself is this double knockout. I just love the color on this. And right now, I don't know if you can really tell, it's about 12 to 18 inches tall. Um, it will easily gain the height of the others. But I wanted, there was another red one in here and it was killed due to over pruning. So don't over prune your roses, but it will easily get as tall. Let me kind of show you the difference in the height there but I just love the color on that and then I kind of want to show folks what I've been talking about with this slope as we go into the garden area the veggie garden area and I'm planning to put in a about an 18 to 24 inch tall retaining wall through here um, to plant out a pollinator patch um, so that they're not just in the pots um, to add some pretty to this slope because it's as you can see here in northeast Tennessee we have some pretty heavy clay soil and so all of that will be I'll have all the grass taken out of it retaining wall which maybe a future video will be me learning how to do a retaining wall all by myself because I've never done one before. But I'm hoping that I can talk some friends who have done one into coming and helping. So we're coming at the garden from a different angle today, but I wanted to show you my coneflower is putting on some pretty. Isn't it gorgeous? It's a little sun scalded. Um, I've been out here making sure it has a drink. 
but the fact that it's putting on some petals means that it's probably still pretty healthy, which is good. And I put in these little pinwheels to add some whimsy because I'm a kind of whimsical gal. But we'll start here with the sweet potato slips. They're looking pretty good. They're a little bit dry. Um, I'm not sure. Again, I've never grown them before, so I don't know exactly how they'll do for me. But then we're starting to see if you can see it real well, like right in there and there. We're starting to see some of the sacred basil coming in, which is nifty. I want to show you my little shepherd's hook. I decided I would take the lantern off of the arch trellis and put it on a shepherd's hook because it's a solar lantern and once those beans crawl up it, up the trellis, it won't get much sun. So I wanted to give it a place where it would actually get some sun so that it would do its little twinkle business in the evening. As I showed you in the last video, it's really, really neat. So we'll come into the garden today. And these are those Scarlet Emperor pole beans. They're starting to get tall enough to take off up the trellis. Again, I do have, as you can see here, I've got a little bit of pest damage, but not too bad. They're not too bad. So I don't tend to treat for pests until it really, really becomes a problem. Um, I don't tend to use a lot of pesticides if I can at all help it. I'll give you another angle on the sweet potatoes here. I don't know if you can hear the, the wind chime. I'll get a little bit closer so maybe my mic will pick it up. But isn't that lovely? Just a little pleasant sound. And here we have the Kentucky Wonders that are doing wonderfully. And it wouldn't be me if I didn't do a little bit of pun action going on. And this little planter, the sacred basil, is just taken off. I'm not sure what the difference is. They were both planted the same day. So I'm not exactly sure what's up with that. But here are, is the first succession of radishes. Get my mic cord out of the way there. They are looking well. And then our second succession has germinated. So that's exciting. Again, these are cherry and plum purple alternating. And then, if you can see over there, the zinnias are starting to come up. So that's cool. They're going to be really pretty. And I've got little pinwheels on those as well. I'll show you what color they are when I leave and go up to the upper part of the, of the garden. So, tomatoes are, they're getting there. I hit them with some fish fertilizer and some Epsom salts. And they're starting, I think, especially as it's been getting a little bit warmer, starting to get a little bit more established and stronger and all of that. So hopefully that was all it was, you know, just the cold stunting them. There's the other tomatoes there. And then if you can see, the shard's starting to shard chard how do you pronounce it hit me up i always say shard i don't know why it's not with a C, it's an sh it's a ch so it should be chard but i don't know why i always say swiss shard me being all frou-frou i guess but i got golden red and bright lights so i'm looking forward to having some of those yummy things and We've got the little baby watermelons. These are sugar babies. So that finally lost its little seed coat. So it's just the green. And there's another one. 
and another one. But these are just the little personal sized watermelons. Um, they get to maybe three pounds, maybe five, but the nasturtiums are also coming in there. And nasturtiums, in case you weren't aware, are edible flowers. The flowers and the leaves are both edible. The leaves taste kind of spicy. They have kind of a, maybe arugula flavor to them. I like to eat them in my wrap sandwiches in place of spinach or lettuce. So, cause they add a little bit of flavor that you can also, you know, chop them up, put them in a salad to add a little bit of a kick. So they're, they're pretty versatile in addition to being beautiful. And these are just taking off. I think this one here had just started coming up when we were out here last. So these are the spaghetti squash. And they're looking healthy. And then the zucchini. Also looking very good. I'm excited to have some zucchini that I can spiralize myself and use as zoodles. That'll be good as we are trying to watch our carbohydrates in this house. Uh, tomatoes over here also I think are starting to perk up a little bit. Let's see over there. I've got a little bit of weeding I need to do. But they're they're getting there. And then we've got the little okra plants right there along that drip tube. So that's up from the last time we were here. And marigolds also looking good. These banana peppers look pretty healthy. This one actually looks like it's starting to put on some some flowers for us so maybe we'll start seeing some peppers pretty soon that's a bell and that's that jalapeno and another bell so there i think they have survived let me snag this weed out of here came out this morning well earlier today not this morning but earlier and Put down a little bit more cardboard and weeded a little bit around the beds. I'm so looking forward next weekend to getting my load of mulch down so it doesn't look like a junk junk pile out here. But and the cantaloupe, another weed there. Another cantaloupe. They're looking pretty good. I also fed the peppers with some fish fertilizer and fed them with some Epsom salts to help build their chlorophyll stores up. And the butternut squash looking good. I'm still not seeing any acorn. I may have to re-sow the acorn squash because I'm really, I'm not seeing anything here friends. That's okay. That's okay. I've got plenty of butternuts, so hopefully we'll we'll be okay. Here are our yellow granix sweet onions. Looking good. And then that is a Cherokee purple and a sun sugar. And then another Cherokee purple tomato. That sun sugar is looking really, really good. But that was started by a friend of mine and gifted to me. So he's much more established as a gardener. Does better than I am so far. So that's this part of the garden. I'll show you the pinwheels from this side well I think they were like a dollar each at Walmart but just add a little bit of fun and whimsy my little garden sheep and then some more up here 
because we get a lot of wind up here so I thought that'd be fun and maybe they will keep the deer from trying to eat at their little salad bar here okay these are the red onions from sets I keep kind of poking around in around to see if they're bulbing but they're not yet so we won't spoon them quite yet and carrots are coming up and then this here in front is a millionaire eggplant the same friend that gave me the sun sugar tomato gave me this and this carnival blend bell pepper so we shall see how those do for me and then the beets are getting up there lovely marigold there and then the peas are just taking off up that trellis can't wait to start seeing some blossoms and start getting some peas hopefully we will before it gets too hot and then the cucamelons are up they're not really up that much further than they were the last time we were here but we are seeing progress and then we've got the lemon cucumbers and these slicers are off to the races as are these weeds that I need to come deal with and these are those white onions from sets and again they're not putting on much bulbage yet so they're not ready to spoon or ring in or whatever you want to call it and I think we're starting to maybe see some nasturtiums. I put nasturtiums in this area last week. Um, doesn't look like they're up yet. But looks like the lettuce is. Yep, yep, yep. I need to go get me a piece of shade cloth. Because it's been really warm here in northeast Tennessee over the past few days. Um, this spot is in a kind of shady spot and so there it's not getting direct hot sun all day but i don't want it to go to seed go bolting before we get a chance to have some salad so i need to go get me a piece of shade cloth and and uh, protect them a little bit but it's looking really good i mean look how pretty this is this butter crunch Yep. very excited about the salad that we'll have before too much longer and then we will end where we start normally with the potatoes and the white powder that you see a white-ish powder um, I side dressed with some bone meal to help with their tuber production because it's high in phosphorus and low in nitrogen because we don't want to feed the foliage as much because I mean look at it y'all it's nice and pretty and green and it doesn't need foliage feeding it needs to get something down there at the tubers to help them but these are looking really good okay, and we'll go up onto the deck instead of off the deck like normal but I do want to show you this is a hybrid tea rose that is in desperate need of some pruning, but isn't she pretty? And it's got a lot of buds on it, but it's definitely too tall for a tea rose. I need to come and prune it down to like maybe <laughs> that tall. But I've always wanted, I love white roses. I've always wanted white roses. So I got one. 
one of the beautiful things about owning your own property is you can plant whatever the heck you want to. But this dark, dark green foliage is so pretty against that white. Okay, and then back up onto the deck instead of going off the deck. I feel like we're like going backwards, but that's okay. Sometimes that's how it works. And we're not seeing much in the herb planters yet. Again, this one is sage. This one is dill. This one is cilantro. We're really not seeing much there. It's basil. Now, there's going to be a lupine on this end, snapdragons on this end. And then this is chives with snapdragons on that end. And you can see the lupine. Lupine, lupin? I'm not sure. It's spelled like lupine, like the wolf. So that's how I'm pronouncing it. If I'm wrong, then someone can correct me. And that's okay. I don't mind being corrected. And the new addition to the container garden on the deck is this anise hyssop. It's in the mint family, which is why it's in a container. Because if you're not aware, mint will take over your world if you're not careful. If you let it grow, you know, not in any kind of container or anything, it is going to go everywhere. But what I'm the most excited about is we're starting to get some strawberries that are turning red. And I think the camera's trying to focus on the netting rather than the strawberries, so we'll get inside the net. But see, we're getting some strawberries that are gaining some size and some redness, so it won't be too long before we're enjoying those. And I do have this net over them to hopefully keep the birds out. We shall see. And then the final stop on the tour is this lovely honeycomb tomato that is doing quite well. I fed it with fish fertilizer and Epsom salts and I'm keeping it watered. Watered it earlier today. When you grow things in containers, they're going to dry out a lot faster, even in raised beds, which is one of the reasons I'm super, super grateful for the drip irrigation um, because they will dry out fast, especially in the almost 90 degree weather that we've had here. So I'll pan around like I normally do. See the nice green backyard. And we'll stop on the roses. It's kind of something pretty and picturesque, but thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day today to join me on this garden tour. Um, going forward, I'm probably going to just do these tours once every couple of weeks. And in between, we'll just do some kind of garden vlogs about gardening in general and you know, what I get out of it and why I do it. And if you've got any questions about gardening that I can answer for you, I am happy to at least attempt it. I'm not by any means an expert, um, though I have taken the Extension Service Master Gardener class. Um, it's kind of a misnomer because you're not a master gardener when you finish, but it gives you enough knowledge to be able to build on that um, as you practice. So I am happy to learn from you and with you. So hit me up in the comments if you have any questions that you would like me to cover in more depth. And until next time, you know, be yourself. Everyone else is taken.